We're all so beautiful. You're so sexy. Work it. Work it. Justin's gone from Twinkie to Hottie. Lindsay from Earth Mother to Working Mother. And Emmett from Fab to Funky to Flaky. And back again. There's been lots of changes over five seasons of Queer as Folk. But behind the feathers and leather, there's one force fueling the folk style. Costume designer Patrick Antosh. It's been an amazing journey to be in Queer as Folk. I've been there since day one. The costumes have evolved incredibly over seasons because each of the characters has an arc that has changed so much from season one to season five. Queer as Folk has been a showcase for Antosh's quirky creations. Even the most conventional clothes featured his witty touch. This is Justin's outfit, uh, St. James Academy. The slogan for the school in Latin is Veni, 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 which means come, come, come. So we put those kind of little subtle jokes in there. Welcome to Gayopolis, home of that fabulous superhero, Rage. By the end of season two, Michael and Justin have developed a comic book called Rage. These are all hand-carved foam bodies covered in latex and cut out authentic nipples made from various electrical engineering pieces. As a backup, because we didn't know who was going to be cast as these characters, we made sure that they actually came with their own butts. But luckily for us, the actors that showed up on the day had your butts. One of the most controversial things we ever did with Wardrobe was in season one. Michael is dating Dr. David, and he decides to hold a political fundraiser at his home. The script actually called for Emmett to be wearing something absolutely fabulous. So we put him in the pink Jackie Kennedy outfit. When you come to a party, you need a little color. Once all the heads agreed that that would be OK and we'd do that, I said, I know you'll never do it, but wouldn't it be funny if one of the waiters spilled cocktail sauce on him? So here we have the original stained cocktail outfit. Dressing this cast has never been a drag. In Debbie's case, Antosh found a look that fit her to a T. When Sharon first came on the show, we threw a few t-shirts on that had these crazy sayings, and suddenly, very quickly, it became a theme. People were vying to see if they could see exactly what the t-shirt said. Life is just a bowl of fairy. It's one of my favorites. At the beginning of every season, I try to make sure that I give Debbie a t-shirt that's remarkable enough, because people have been waiting for months. So in season before we started with Fuck Yoga, a personal favorite, and it was one of my personal. You can take this however you'd like it. What do you think? It's like a movie, a horror movie. Ironically, the most stylish of the crew was the most difficult to dress. I think Brian had the most distinct characteristic style-wise. He was dark and brooding, perfect clothes that reflected the amount of money he had to invest in clothing. To repeat that for over 80 episodes over five years and not have him look like he's just wearing the same outfit over and over and over again was a really difficult challenge. From colorful to classic to kitsch, Antosh's designs for Queer as Folk brought gay chic out of the closet. I almost feel like I've peaked as a costume designer. I really don't know where I could go to better my what I've done on Queer as Folk. It's so juicy. You get to dress men as women. All these over-the-top costumes, huge drag shows that I loved every minute of it. So sexy. So sexy. Work it. I walked into my first audition, I was like, are we doing this? Because this is crazy, y'all. The energy of that first script I read was unlike anything I had read before. I definitely thought, wow. I knew it would be historic, and it was necessary. Somebody had to do it. We started with a bang, and I guess we're going out with one. Queer as Folk, the final season. For the show that shocked a nation and changed the face of TV, it's still all or nothing. We find Emmett Honeycutt doing his party planning business, which is going well, and he uh, gets sucked into yet another new career. I'm going to be Channel 5's queer guy, generally showing Pittsburgh how to be fabulous. You can start by showing me. Yeah, it's kind of like this old Teddy this season. We'll see him get fixed up a bit, I guess. <laughs> look at me. I look like a cow chart in the butcher shop. This year, the pressure cooker is kind of blown a bit, and things kind of get explosive. I'm going to have joint custody. Then you go ahead and try. Michael struggles a lot this season with being a gay parent and having the system kind of set up against you. Melanie's also trying to uh, redefine the new family along with the other members. It's a very complicated family. There's just, there's no manual for it. Ben has been referred to, I think on screen and off, as Zen Ben. Hey! <laughs> 
we really get to see that turned on its head this season. Do you mind if I finish? As a matter of fact, we do. He becomes as un Zen Ben like as you could imagine. Brian is, I guess, trying to reconcile the fact that his closest friends are moving more towards family structure in their own lives. And what would be practical, Theodore? To get married, become an imitation heterosexual. Justin has a totally different way of perceiving life. Justin, as he gets older, sort of realizes what it is that, that he wants and is able to articulate it. I was hoping we were finally going to be a real couple. While old friends adjust to change, surprising new faces emerge to mix things up. A lot of great looking gals here, didn't you think? Rosie fit right in. My knees are shaking, I'm a nervous wreck. I'm doing fine. Every gay woman has had the fantasy of kissing Sharon Glass. So when Sheila called me, I said, it would be with Sharon that I She goes, yeah, no, you do all your scenes with Sharon. I, like, I am so in. She came on the set saying, I'm not an actress, I'm just a stand-up comic, okay? I'm not an actress. And I said, oh, stop. Right. Well, by the time she finished the three weeks with us, she was saying, I'm a professional actress. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Cindy Lauper! We got a free Cindy Lauper concert. <laughs> For me, it's great fun. The show itself is groundbreaking. And what it's done for the community is remarkable. It's the end of the novel, in a way. So this year uh, is the final chapter. We're not going out quietly. We have a lot of characters, and we have a lot of material to sort of try and get out there. Fit more storylines in. It's really everything coming together. Uh, and that was not a double entendre at all. You know, I did not mean that sexually, as is so often the case on the show. I wouldn't trade in this experience for, for anything this five years. Honestly, I'm going to get the Clint. Oh, yeah. <laughs>